guest tonight is drag queen and accidental activist who was a massive force in Ireland's referendum on same-sex marriage in 2015. Any soccer hooligan, any fascist, any murderer, any sex offender can get married, but you cannot. Let the gays get married and the sky will fall down. Get behind the campaign, do your bit. Look at me, I'm dressed as a giant woman. I'm the gayest thing in the world. Wow, that's pretty gay. <laughs> Would you please welcome Patty Bliss, everybody? Oh, thank you. Hello, Patty. Of course, it turns out I'm only the second gayest thing in the world. I think you're gayer than I am. Oh, come on, Power Bottom. <laughs> you can't, it's a family show, Patty. 9 p.m., I was told. Granny asked the kids no, what that was about. You can say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> now, you look amazing. And I oh, love well, drag, I love your work. I love drag queens generally. But whenever I look at them, I think, God, that looks exhausting. Well, you see, it is exhausting, but a drag queen's job really is to look like you're always having fun. I mean, that is what we are paid for often. Yeah. And certainly younger drag queens who get paid to be in nightclubs and all that, you are literally paid to look like you're enjoying yourself, whether you are or not. You know, and when you're 23 being paid, you know, just to get drunk and run around and be the life of the party, like, what 23-year-old wouldn't want that <laughs> job, so... But how long are we talking? How long does it take you to look like this? I like to have two hours. Oh. Um, <laughs> And then Every I can sort of vaguely relax. Most, most days of your life, of your year, you would be. Well, I'm in drag a lot, <laughs> um, and, um, and like today, you're the first of three, you know, things. And um, it's a weird thing. You go into like a zen moment because obviously I have painted this face, and you know, you can't thousands tell. upon <laughs> thousands of times. Well, it's only just a little lippy, I know, but. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> You just sort of like, I sit down and think, oh God, I'm gonna be here for the next two hours. But then you kind of you kind of zone out or something and then the next thing you know, the two hours have gone and you're late. And is it rude to ask, <laughs> is it rude to ask a drag queen about the tucking process? I can't not think no, about it. No, no, because I know you all want to know that and I'm, a, I am an open book. Okay. Um, tucking is the hiding of the male Well, you opinion. see, here's the thing, because you know, I come from a country where we need to wear clothes to survive. <laughs> and, <laughs> And you come from a country where you, you need to wear as little clothes as possible to survive. Yes, right. And so Australian drag means they're always like wearing these kind of bikini things. Like if you look at Courtney Act, a great friend of mine, one of the most wonderful and delightful and sincerest people I know, um, like Courtney was wandering around in barely nothing. So in that case, your tub needs to be excellent. <laughs> um, whereas if you're in Ireland, you know, um, <laughs> You know, I am. It's so cold in... that it yeah. kind of tucks itself. So, like, I, I'm half foam rubber. Okay. I am like literally half foam rubber. Oh so, my God. Um, so that you know, you, Mike took me a little more comfortable. Okay, great. Yeah. Good to know. Now, speaking of Ireland, Australia and Ireland are the only countries in the world that have put the issue of marriage equality to the people. Yes. You were heavily involved in the um, yeah. referendum in Ireland. And you want the benefit of my wisdom now. Well, like what are you? Is Ireland going to hell now? <laughs> what kind of dystopia can we, Australia, now that we have legalised gay marriage, look Well, I'll tell you, to? it is interesting because it is, we are in a very unique position, which is we are the only two countries in the world that know to a percentage point yes. what the rest of the country thinks about us. Yes. And, um, and we, now, we did it by referendum because we needed to change our constitution. And so ours actually meant something, unlike your bullshit postal vote. Hey! Um, <laughs> which meant nothing! No! You're all traitors! Bloody comrades, shut and up! <laughs> you could have just given me the twenty-two million dollars, yeah. and you know, and Alicia would have gotten a show out of it. And, <laughs> no, no, so so ours nothing, but um, I, and, and we beat you by one percentage point. We were sixty-three well, percent. Well, you were really 10, happy 62. For you, But I will tell you this: it, in ours now, three years afterwards, and I'll say, I'll tell you, I, I know we don't have much time, so briefly a couple of things. One is. If we reran it today in Ireland, the, the vote would be much higher in favour mm. because, you know, at the last minute people go into a voting booth, they've just heard somebody like Cory Bernardi or some other idiot say something horrible, you know, about gay people and they think, oh, you know, what are these rights? So they just vote to keep things the same because that's safer. Three years after the vote in Ireland, everybody realizes, oh my God, nothing's happened. Everything's exactly the same, mm. you know. Um, so so the, the vote would be much higher. But I, I will say this also, and I hope you have the same experience here. I thought... Before, before the vote, that what would happen is the vote would happen and then the next day gay people could get married but otherwise nothing else would change. Um, but actually it was much more significant than that because if what it did was for the LGBTI community in Ireland, it gave us a real sense of security in our place in Irish society. And we know exactly what the rest of the country thinks about us and it turns out they're fine with us. Now, I might have suspected that before, but I didn't know it. Mm. But now I do know it. And that has sort of liberated queers in Ireland uh, to just be much more open. You see people holding hands all the time in the street now and that kind of thing in a way that you didn't before. Yeah. And the other thing is, 
I think for everybody in the country, they think of it as a good thing. They think they look back on it as you know a good day. They think, and for the first time, maybe Irish people saw themselves as progressive or something. Yeah. So it has actually been sort of transformative for Irish people. Well, and and I hope that you guys have the experience. I'm, I'm sure you will have the same experience. And the other thing, of course, for us is we're locked in. The conversation's over. It's in our constitution. We are, you know, that can't, you know, they can't undo that. Without another. <laughs> you guys, on the other hand, you know, like you just need some, you know, idiots to come into power, and they could actually. You've take got a 12, you got 1,200 same sex couples have been married since the decision, and you have an openly gay prime minister now too. We do. So like, we are like, if we're going to go gay. We're going to go all the way. <laughs> um, and you're the thank for that. Wow. Happy place, everyone. <laughs>